Hi there friends, it's Daniel here and today I wanted to give you an honest overview of the new AI generative tools inside of the beta version of Photoshop. Now over the last day and a half we've seen a lot of hype about this tool but what I wanted to do today is break it down and look at it from a portrait photographer's perspective. Now when we look at all of these videos it all looks absolutely fantastic and we've seen some amazing results and it's results that I would say a designer would be really happy with, okay? Like I said, I'm gonna be looking at this tool from a purely portrait photographer's perspective, okay? Now, let's go and have a look at a video that they released on their channel. This is through Adobe Firefly Beta. This is the in-painting tools, which is pretty much what we're seeing now as the AI generated full tool inside of the beta version of Photoshop, okay? So let's have a look at this from a closer perspective, we can see that we painting and removing or making a selection of his shirt here. I'm gonna press play. So it's gonna go pretty quick and I'm gonna try and pause it where necessary. I'm gonna say, let's type in there a red jacket and it's gonna give us a result that looks like a red jacket, okay? Keep that in the back of your head. It looks like a red jacket. At first glance here, we're thinking, wow, that's awesome, it put in a red jacket and it replaced the guy's t-shirt with a red jacket. But is it really a great jacket? No, it's not, okay? It's representing an illusion or the impression that it's a red jacket because we can see that it's obviously red and it's got kind of that jacket kind of feel. But what's going on here? What is this all about, okay? It seems like some crazy design, but I can, put a bit of an explanation behind this. Now, Adobe is referencing a huge library of images and a lot of stock images. And due to copyrights, it's trying to avoid those copyrights by taking bits and pieces from different images and forming a new image, okay? The new AI image. But it's doing a weird thing because it's taking little samples from all of these different parts of a jacket and making it a single jacket with some weird flaws, okay? Look at it. I mean, what is that? What is that? That doesn't match in with that. What, what is this area here, okay? Guys, question this. Look at it from a realistic point of view. It looks great on the surface, but is it ready for a full production? I'm not convinced at this stage. It looks great. Okay, when you're looking at it from this perspective here and these quick videos that you're seeing here, but if you look at any of those results that it made there, it doesn't make sense. What is this? What is this hanging here? What is that happening there? What is that? Why is the pocket over here? Why is it looking so weird? Guys, question these things. I know it's beta. I know you guys are going, yeah, but Dan, this is beta. I understand that. I totally get that. Okay, but we have to be realistic. Okay, because you're going to have folks out there who think now they can just generate things on the fly and it's all going to be hunky-dory. I mean, let's test this out, okay? So that was in painting, which is pretty much the generator full that we're seeing here. So let's put this to practical use here as a portrait photographer. So Kevin and, and, and Sarah over here ask me, can you please replace my daughter's jacket with a denim jacket? And I'm going to go, uh, yes, I can do that. I've seen a video just yesterday on this process. I'm obviously not going to tell them that, but in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, uh, hell yeah, this is going to be really easy to do this. So let's put that to practice. What I'm going to do is make a selection of my subject's jacket here. And it doesn't have to be an accurate selection whatsoever. You just got to tell Photoshop approximately where this part of the jacket is. Go to this side of the jacket as well, obviously. Okay, and we've made a basic selection of where we think the jacket is. So it's given us this option, generative full. So I'm gonna click it once, and I'm gonna type in there, denim jacket. Okay, it's quite small, that interface, so you really have to struggle to see what you're typing. And if you type it wrong, it's gonna tell you that's an invalid language, okay? So I'm gonna hit generate, and let's see what happens, okay? Remember, mom and dad yeah, it's asked us to put a denim jacket on their daughter. And I'm going, yeah, baby, I can do this. This is absolutely possible because of this new technology, okay? But is it possible, really, really now? 
We'll find out the results in a moment, okay? And the first result is, uh, you know, computer says no. And we'll say, well, Dan, there's two other options there. Uh, this option over here is a definite no. This one is, oh, it's kind of getting there, but it's a no, right? Definite no there. And again, let me just stress this, okay? Obviously, due to copyright, they can't just slap on a denim jacket from a full image from somewhere, okay? What it's going to do now is gather little bits of jacket from different denim jackets and make a new jacket. And no matter how many times I press generate here, the results are going to be, well, I'm going to be frank, disastrous, okay? It's nothing that we can actually work with, right? We have to be realistic in this capability here. We can see, definitely not usable, definitely not usable. None of those there. And I can keep generating hundreds and hundreds of these different denim jackets, but they're all going to be different and they're all going to make no sense whatsoever, okay? We all know what denim jackets look like, okay? This one might pass, but again, it's a mess, all right? On top of it being a mess, it's actually low resolution as well. So there's a no-go in that zone. I'm sorry, guys, that just doesn't work for me. So clear that, all right? So we've discovered that that is not an actual reality in this, okay? Don't be fooled by what they're showing you because it's just not accurate. Let's say, for example, it was completely accurate. What would happen if we had a second image of my subjects here, maybe mom and dad facing the camera and they wanted the same jacket on the second image? We've got to be aware that every time we click generate, it's going to generate a completely different result every time we click it. That's where the issue is. I saw one where the guy made a complete change of a background and I thought to myself, well, that's great on that single image, but what's gonna happen when you've got that subject maybe posed slightly different in exactly the same image and you're gonna separate that subject from your background and regenerate another background based on a text prompt, how are you going to ensure that you're going to have the same result the second time around. It's just not possible, okay? Guys, again, I know this is being hard, but we've got to look at this from a realistic point of view as portrait photographers, okay? I still think this has still got a long way to go, all right, for us to be able to actually make use of it in a portrait photographer's workflow. So folks, at this stage, in terms of clothing and changing clothing in an image, it's just a no-go. It's a non-starter by my standards, and I think anybody would agree with that, okay? Let's say, for example, my clients here said they've got a British blue cat and they'd like to include it in the image, but they don't have an image of a British blue cat, so let me try and generate one, okay? So I'm gonna go, well, yeah, I can actually do that because I saw people yesterday doing uh, these steps inside of Photoshop and adding in elements, so let's do it, okay? We're going to create a text-based uh, prompt here to add a British blue cat in. So let's see if we draw a bounding box about the size of a British blue cat, maybe around about there. And then we go to generative fill and we type in there British blue cat. And let's wait for those results to be returned, okay? I can tell you now, just like the jacket episode, it's going to create the illusion that it could be construed as a British blue cat, but it isn't really. And it's not even gonna be a high resolution image of a British blue cat, okay? And, you know, I, I'm, I'm not that wowed by the results, okay? It's great to a degree. In some instances, what we're adding into these images do work, but in instances like this, where you've got a definable, definable character or object or animal, it's not really doing a great job here. It's creating the illusion that it's a British blue cat. Now, some of these are quite close. I mean, I own a British blue cat, but you know, we've lost everything here. What, what's going on with the whiskers here? Half whiskers there, no whiskers here, and it's just not a detailed image, okay? It's also quite low resolution, if you ask me. It's all pixelated, okay? And again, you know, coming back to the 1024, pixels by 1024 pixel a square block that it's referencing. It's just not working here either, okay? So we can't even add in animals. I mean, 
Let's try another one. One more here. Let's try a husky. Let's try and make a bounding box about the size of a husky. Now I think a husky is quite big. It might go above the knee here. Uh, let's try it out. Okay. Generate a full top in husky. I really think they need to make this this block here, this text block, a lot bigger because on a 4K resolution monitor, that's too small. Okay, I've typed in Husky and I'm going to click Generate. All right, again, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to give us the illusion of a Husky. Okay, I might as well go back into my own database here and go and trim out a Husky and put it into this frame. Okay, that might be easier, maybe even more realistic, to be honest. But you can see that it's, oh goodness me, what on earth is that? Okay, an evil husky made up of different huskies. Yet again, the results there, guys, come on. Really? Adobe, you can do better than this, okay? I appreciate that you might be trying to avoid a copyright issue here, but why don't you just get a whole bunch of Adobe stock photographers to get huskies in different poses? Maybe that will work, I don't know. Maybe this is just too early to criticize like this, okay? But that isn't a husky to me. That is an illusion that it's a husky, right? So, I, you know, that's just not, that's not going to fly in this case, okay? So there we go. You know, adding things into an image is just not working. It's not a workable solution. Let's see where it could potentially work for us, all right? <laughs> now, let's say, for example, Pooch over here didn't belong to them and it sort of photobombed the shot here okay it was never supposed to be there i don't know whose dog that is but i captured it let's say they want to or let's say they want me to remove this dog so let's go and do that so we're going to grab our lasso tool now it's not going to show generate full until we actually make a selection on our image okay just be aware of that you're not going to see generate full right there now until you actually make a selection of the doggy here, all right? The doggy photobomb the shoot here, it didn't belong to them, and they've asked me to remove it. And I'm gonna go, yeah, sure, okay, I'll move, I'll move doggy over here, no problem at all, okay? So there we go, we've got a selection of doggy here, and I'm gonna click generate a fill, but this time I'm not gonna give it a text-based prompt, I'm just gonna tell it to generate. So let's generate, that area of our image or regenerate it in this process okay maybe this time around the results are going to be a lot more realistic because it's basing its information on the current pixels of our image and lo and behold it's done a marvelous job it's the first time that this particular tool has done something worthwhile has it though <laughs> okay i'm sorry i have to put all these butts here but has it Okay, AI and fingers is just a weird thing. It just cannot cope with fingers. Whatever reason, I don't know, okay? It's like we could give AI the middle finger in this case, yeah, and it wouldn't know what to do with it, okay? So the other issue that we've got here is a mismatch in terms of the actual noise in our original image and the noise in the generated part of our image does not match up. I've found a way around this and follow me here. I'm going to click on this layer here and we're going to add a filter here and we're going to add some noise into this image here or into that generated part of the image just to get it to kind of match up. And there we go. So yes, finally, something usable in terms of the generated full tool in a portrait photographer's workflow. Okay, so here we're getting a sense of what it's capable of doing. And that's wonderful, okay? The issue though here is not just that, okay? The issue here is based on the actual resolution of our image, okay? Or the resolution of what it's bringing back to us here. Unfortunately, it's a slightly lower quality image. The reason why is that it's referencing a 1024 by 1024 pixel aspect ratio, okay? That's sort of not even HD. This is going to be an issue for us right now in terms of the actual resolution. And it's been hidden away here because this is an out of focus area. But on closer inspection, you can see the cross hatching over here. It's sort of like it's trying to make a nice smooth version of the image, but it's almost like it threw an out of focus part 
of that image into the equation here to hide away the fact that it's a low resolution image, okay? And we can have a look at this a little bit later on. But I'm, I'm hiding it away a little bit here by adding a bit of noise into that area, okay? So I'm trying to compensate for where it's failing, right? So that might be possible. All right, let's keep this image here and just clear that and keep the doggy here because we love our doggy here. All right, it wasn't a stray dog that just photobombed the image. <laughs> okay, so let's have a look at where else it could be used in this process, okay? Maybe, just maybe, we could use the generative full tool on the knees of our subject here. Cover up those holes. Let's become a seamstress for one day here. We're going to click on generate full and we're going to click generate. Now, yet again, it's sending this data up to the cloud. And this over here to me is a little bit of a time wasting process, okay? I'm gonna demonstrate another tool that we can use here instantly on our computers that's gonna give us instant results. But I just wanted to show you guys the reality of trying to fill that area in using the generative full tool, okay? So it's done a pretty okay job there, right? Not excellent, but it's done an okay job. But there's a faster way of obviously doing this, okay? We can simply go over to the new remove tool right here and I can remove that there in an instant without it going up to the cloud or any of those fancy features. And voila, we've got some grand results there in just a couple of clicks, okay? So that was a lot faster than trying to send it to the cloud and let that information be returned to our computer systems, okay? Right, let's try and expand our canvas here, okay? I've seen a lot of videos out there where guys are expanding almost infinitely and creating entirely new scenes. It's great, but is it? Okay, I'm sorry I have to add these buts, but is it great? All right, let's look at this image here. Let's say that the clients come back to me and said, Dan, we love this image, but could you perhaps fit it onto a portrait orientated canvas? And I'm gonna go, yes, I absolutely can. And I can do it with confidence. All right, let's do that here. What we're going to do is we're going to take our crop tool and we're just going to extend our canvas in that direction there and extend the, extend the bottom of our canvas here, okay? Something to that effect, okay? Maybe we can make this a 5 by 7 something like that. Okay, let's press OK there. So we've got this top end of our image and this bottom end of our image that we need to fill in, okay? Let's ask the AI to do this for us here, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a rectangular marquee tool here, and we're gonna just overlap onto our image here. This is important. We need Photoshop to reference some data in this area here. And let me click generate a fill here and generate, okay? So I'm asking Photoshop to generate pixels based on what we've already got in our image here and give us a result, okay? So again, it's gonna send it all up to the cloud and it's gonna download those results. And that looks pretty nice, okay? I'm gonna go for the option number three here or maybe even two here. I'm not quite happy with the results completely here. So I'm gonna click generate again and see what other results we're getting. Those aren't bad, but I, I'm sure I can get better. I know what this location looks like, but I'm gonna see what we can generate using AI. That absolutely looks brilliant, okay? Let's have a closer inspection on that area that it filled in, right? Here's where our image stopped here. And you can clearly see again, we still got that issue there. We've got the resolution of our image and we've got the noise in our image there. Um, that's all great until it gets to this area here. And this is where it falls flat a little bit. It's not bad, I guess we could again hide those imperfections away with a noise filter here, okay? You can add noise there, and we can kind of hide it away, but it's not the same noise as the actual noise of the camera. The other issue that we do have here is that the generated pixels in these areas here are still low resolution, okay? And it's kind of stretched it out. Now they hide it well, I'll give that to them, but it really does look like this in this location, which is really, really, Awesome, I love that idea. And of course, you know, we've got the other options here of what else we generated. That's also pretty nice. That's also um, fairly close to what it looks like here, okay? And it's doing a pretty nice job at replicating the bokeh balls 
present in my image. So that's all really good. I just feel like we just need that little step up in the resolution here. And that's going to go a long way for this process here. Okay. You know, if we can a bit better closely match the noise, the noise we can kind of get away with, but it's the actual lower end of the quality of that generated area that needs a little bit of improvement. Again, I'm just being very honest with you guys. I'm giving you the real, real uh, feedback as a portrait photographer here. Now let's generate this bottom part of the image. Same process, rectangular marquee tool. Again, overlapping a little bit on that image, okay? And I'm gonna click generate a fill, right? And I'm clicking a separate one here and it's creating a generative layer two here. And let's see the results there. This is pretty easy. It should actually make it out of focus automatically. And this is a part that I really like about this process because we're being able to expand our images really, really well, okay? And it looks really authentic. It's just that little bit out of, out of sync with the rest of the image here, okay? It's done a fantastic job. Yes, it's beta. I'm sure this is gonna get better in terms of that resolution. And I'm sure that it's gonna to try to, probably try and closely replicate the noise that we've got in our image. If it doesn't, we can always add in that little bit of noise and try and hide it the way, or try and hide it away the best we can, okay? Let's see what it's generated at the bottom here. Absolutely phenomenal results, okay? So before and after, it's filled in that area really nice. And again, you know, we've got that missing bit of noise that we can obviously add in again, you know, just to, to sort of make it look a little bit more convincing in those areas. But again, the downside there is just that little bit of a lower resolution than I'm, than I'm expecting for this workflow. But there you go, you know, we've got this really, really well orchestrated extension of our image, even though we've had to make a few sacrifices there and you know adding in a few little things there to make it look a bit more convincing okay this has still got a long way to go i feel but you know onwards and upwards so folks i hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next session cheers for now